Thank you, and I'll quickly thank uh, the host and the library for doing this. I'm Pete Furman, candidate for City Council. I am a four and a half year full-time resident in Sedona. I am a planning and zoning commissioner on my second term. I'm on the Sedona Police Pension Board. In the past, I've served on Sedona work groups on home rule, which after our election four years ago, the city put together a work group, I was on that, and the uh, budget uh, uh, work group as well. Prior to moving to Sedona, I served for eight years as chief of staff to the mayor of San Jose, California. Uh, and, um, and, but I'm an engineer by training and by background. And I started my career down in Phoenix in 1986 and finished it in San Jose when, uh, and I started my own advanced manufacturing company. So I bring experience and energy from both the private and the public sectors. My campaign is about improving the quality of life for Sedona residents and the, lo and the local businesses that we that we rely on, protecting the environment and uh, local contr uh, local control. Yes, the home rule. We'll talk about that later tonight too. Uh, my uh, website is SedonaPete.com. My Facebook page is also SedonaPete. I look forward to earning your support. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Tex White, for hosting this event tonight. My name is Scott Jablow. I'm currently the vice mayor, and I'm running for mayor. I'm running for mayor because the time has come for a change. Not in our direction, most certainly, but in how we get there and how we engage and listen to our residents. This is important to me and something I've been doing for eight years. But what does that mean? Okay? That means when I engage with people, since engaging with people, we now will be building eight pickleball courts. Okay? I have proposed legislation to change the on-road status of OHVs. I met with residents from Bear Wallet to discuss their concerns recently. I have been working and heavily engaged with people about the airport Mesa uh, and the, the noise. Other people about you know, my college. I met with groups, many, many groups and people about their short-term rentals and the problem that they're engaging with, with those problems. The people who live in uh, back of beyond and Chapel Road parking lot. And several communities dealing with trash cans issues and we now have an ordinance that helps with that. Uh, these are just the tip of the iceberg. In eight years, I've met with many, many, many people. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Brian Fultz. I am a resident of the Chapel area, along with my wife, Amy, the uh, director of our fantastic Sedona Charter School. Together, we have three children. Uh, I'm originally a degree rocket scientist by training, so when you all say it doesn't take a rocket scientist to solve our problems here, I can only say, you know what, it can't hurt to have one around. <laughs> Uh, in my career, I've worked for large companies like General Electric and Accenture, but for the last 16 years and counting, I've been a small business owner, focusing primarily on my consulting company called Peak Innovation. I love to be creative, and you may have noticed I'm the only candidate that has round uh, campaign signs here in town. <laughs> I've been an owner, in, uh, a property owner here in Sedona for 18 years, but became a full-time resident last year, and I've jumped in head first. I've completed the Sedona uh, Citizens Academy, which is a great way to learn about how our city operates. I've been appointed to the 10-year Community Plan Update Working Group, and I look forward to sharing more later. Hi, everyone. I'm Jennifer Strait, and I'm running for City Council. I've lived in Sedona for a little over a year's time, and this has been the easiest decision ever to make, to be able to contribute and build the future that we're all looking for. I moved to Sedona with the intention to one day raise a family here. So for me, I'm truly invested, invested in the community, the fabric, how we come together from the resident standpoint, to, as well as the business standpoint, as well as even the tourist standpoint. So that's a holistic view. What do I bring to the table? I'm currently earning my doctorate in transformative economics. Basically, I think of ideas that are outside the system. I take an integral approach, a very academic approach. I look at other towns and cities around the world, see how we can bring it back home. I'm very conservative with the budget. I see a lot of overspending here. We're up to 110 million and growing, and that's not okay with me. So I look at how can we be more conservative and also regenerative economics. How can we make money instead of just relying on tourism? How can we create more industries here that favor also different aspects of lifting the community's population? So for me, I'm all about values and principles and leading with that. So again, this has been the easiest decision ever to make, and it's jenniferforsedona.com. Thank you. Hello, my name is Samuel Armstrong, and I'm running for Sedona Mayor. The time for change is upon us. We are here to plant the seeds of our future that we can all be proud of. 
sewing together the interests of our unique community to create the vision for our next several decades, prevailing against the interests of international conglomerates that do not authentically represent our true needs will be paramount. Defining who we are must be done organically from the ground up as a community, and it starts with us being willing to embrace our differences, appreciating one another's perspectives, while not always necessarily agreeing. With the nurturing of our community, our children, laying the groundwork for their opportunity to thrive, the care for our elders and their health, local government must do its best to stay out of the way while encouraging partnerships with private industry that cares for Sedona. There's no room for discrimination like we often witness with those who have different thoughts and perspectives. And while we are flawed, we must strive to maintain a level of progress rather than perfection and learning to coexist again after all that we have been through. It may be challenging, but it must be done. All right, so I'm Melissa Dunn. Uh, we've been in the home here for 14 years, and we moved back from the UK where we worked for six years um, right after COVID allowed us to leave the UK. So we've been here a little over a year, year and a half. Um, I have spent uh, about 30 years, please, some of you, I know that's right around how old you are, so shut up. <laughs> um, but I have spent uh, three decades working, solving people problems um, in the high-tech industry. And problem solving is like a favorite thing for me to do. It's why I'm actually uh, running for city council. I came home and I said, wow, look at all the issues we suddenly have that surprised us after the last time we've been here in 2019. And I said, they're complex. We have complex problems in Sedona. There's state issues and there's USFS issues. And we've got a lot of people who are on our uh, problem list. So I am a problem solver. I love solving problems. Just to let you know, I have a BA in political science. I have a master's in sociology. I, I have all the dissertation in sociology. And I have a master's in human-centered design and engineering. And she's telling me to stop. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'm John Thompson. I'm a current member of the Sedona City Council. I was elected in 2014 and served a term. And then I was reappointed in uh, last, uh, last spring to fill a vacancy. So I've served on your council for about uh, five and a quarter years, I, by my calculations. And I'm standing for re-election to the council. Um, my focus is and always has been on long-term vision and sustainability. During my five years, I've mostly agreed with the majority positions of the council. Uh, but I'll give you a couple of exceptions so you get a little bit better idea of who I am. I have pushed harder and earlier than my colleagues for action on sustainability in general and climate change in particular. And I questioned the process and the decision to build a parking garage on the planned North Forest site. And I'll be happy to talk about any of those things with you later if you like. Uh, beyond that, my full biography is on my website, and I'll leave it to you to go and look at that, SedonaJT.com. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm Sandy Moriarty. Uh, thank you for coming tonight, and thanks to XYZ for hosting the forum. I've been the mayor for nearly eight years now, and it's been a learning experience like no other. In the 70s and 80s, I worked on three different committees over a period of 15 years to get Sedona incorporated so that we could make decisions for our community in the community rather than in two counties. We finally succeeded with an election in December of 1987 and were incorporated in January 1988. I was appointed to the first city council and served until the end of May 1988 when the first elected council took over. I also served on the housing commission for six years and the wastewater and effluent disposal and land use task force for two years prior to running for mayor in 2014. I'm a problem solver, a negotiator, and a lifelong learner. And I've lived in Sedona for 50 years, so I know Sedona and the Verde Valley very well. The job of mayor and council is to set city priorities and make policy, which uh, our professional staff is directed to carry out under our oversight. My website is mayorsandy.com. Thank you. Wow, we don't have much time, so uh, really quick. Uh, my name is Kurt Gelbach. I was introduced to Sedona 54 years ago. I'm 61 this year, so I have been visiting Sedona my entire life, and 26 years ago, Sedona called me home. I've been very involved within the politics 
and certainly understand the method of operation. So tonight, I'm going to switch some things up. As you see, I'm not reading anything because I have a habit of reading things. These forums are too stuffy for me, and they're too short with regard to our answers. So tonight, what I'd like you all to do is take a good look and pay attention to the logic and the common sense. I want you to take a good look and pay attention to the talk. Because if you go on to my website, KurtForSedona.com, I have been creating the business, or excuse me, I shouldn't say that, I've been creating the models for our future. When you take a good look at the transportation model, seven-stage color-coded transportation model called Sedona Centennial, you'll get a good idea of some of the things that we have the possibilities of doing. And this is why these forums, I'm not going to read anything tonight. We're going to just have some fun. Thank you, everybody. Okay, I'm gonna ask the first question and we have uh, randomized, um, randomized it, so once you're done, just please pass it to the right for this question. Um, the first question is, Sedona's workforce, which is comprised mostly of members of generations X, Y, and Z, has an extraordinarily difficult time securing affordable housing in Sedona. What specific measures will you employ to increase the number of affordable housing units in Sedona? And what will you do to accelerate, expedite the process in place to provide housing solutions within your term on the council? I love that question because the key word here is accelerate. How do, we, how do we accelerate the process? So currently the problem that we have with any type of construction, whether it's affordable or high end, is that there's too many fees, there's too many permits, there's too many codes. All this stuff is red tape that takes time and extra money and just logs things up. So instead of that, we need to be taking a look at how do we pull those things back. I've talked with locals, both businesses as well as resident owners, and they've left Sedona to go places like Cottonwood because it's easier to start things and move things along and it's cheaper. So we really need to take a look at how do we make things more efficient and not so cumbersome and wasting money on everyone's time frame. Also, let's take a look at how we can create more um, housing development for homeowners to build casitas in their backyard. So currently, they are, they are allowed to do that, but the issue is that there can be an, uh, an addition that they can do. So right now, we can be creating more affordable housing if, again, we're allowing the growth that's already on existing property rather than asking ourselves, well, how do we do new development and new land? No, we, let's utilize what we already have and create economic development for local homeowners. That's how I see um, being two ways that we can help bring in affordable housing. Thank you. Very nice. So the housing plan that was made was in response to a growing crisis that wasn't recognized soon enough. And real estate development is a long-term process that doesn't happen overnight. So you have long-term plans for a solution that's in a crisis mode right now. And with all that's occurring in our economy, once you get into the action of development, you're gonna hit lots of limitations with your traditional resources because of the supply chain shortages that we're coming up against and the workforce shortages that we're all experiencing. And then of course there's the bureaucracy of zoning and permitting delays, it's a slow process. So because we first need to identify that we are in a crisis, we have to look at things outside of the box. We have to um, acknowledge that this global situation is at our doorstep, and without workers, our businesses are gonna suffer and our community will ultimately suffer. So we need to locate and assess the viability of pocket properties and alternative available land within 30 miles. Identify alternative housing solutions such as Vicka box homes, look it up, it's really interesting. Uh, box blocks, insulated concrete forms, manufactured homes, tiny homes, glamping structures. We need to immediately co cooperate on securing land and flexibility of development with both the city and the county. And then we need to bring builders and the developers together to get into the fray and break open the bottlenecks to get to an immediate solution to an immediate crisis that's occurring. Thank you. So I am going to read you guys. These are really complicated questions. I have a lot of thoughts, and I have to try to get them out in 90 seconds. Thanks, Marcy. Yeah. So um, in the short and medium term, we can and should be working with the builder of the Sunset Lost Project, which is both underwritten and rent-subsidized by the city. We need to see whether or not this effort to produce multiple units of affordable housing can be accelerated, and if so, how do we go about doing that? Long term, we must get some level of control over the short term rentals 
if we ever hope to have enough more affordable long-term rental properties and affordable properties for purchase in Sedona. So we should continue to lobby the state of Arizona to give cities like Sedona the power to manage the number of short-term rental properties within our city. In the meantime, we need to find ways to make commuting from neighboring cities like Cottonwood, Flagstaff, the VOC, and more, more livable. This starts with flexible, affordable commuting, but also needs to include the ideas around childcare for preschoolers within the Sedona city limits. Finally, we must look at the land owned by the city and weigh the costs and legal implications of building and owning city-controlled housing for both critical workers, which are police, healthcare, teachers, etc., and our essential workers, which are the people who help us in the stores and the restaurants. We can look to cities like Flagstaff, Aspen, Tahoe, and others for lessons on what did and did not work. Depending on what we learn, we might look to a portion of the city-owned land at the Dows as a location for new affordable housing. Thank you. Well, of course we need to keep pressing for more local control over short-term rentals. That's at the root of most of our housing problems. Sedona shares a housing manager with Cottonwood, and I just voted to approve an additional headcount on our staff to work exclusively with Shannon on housing issues. I have supported down payment assistance and similar programs that staff has recommended. With regard to housing for our workforce, I support efforts to create adequate housing within our borders at all economic levels. I approve of acquiring land where it makes sense to use for public-private partnerships with developers to build affordable priced rentals as we have done for the Sunset Lofts uh, location. I will support similar public-private partnerships and incentives on privately owned land as well. And that goes for redevelopment of parcels with existing uses as well as undeveloped land. And finally, I support flexibility in our density, density limits and height limits for key projects as long as neighborhood transitions and views can be reasonably preserved. Affordable, affordable housing is one of the most difficult issues we face. The city's hired a housing manager, Shannon Boone, who's tasked with looking at options for addressing the 1,500 unit shortage identified in the recent housing study. One is to look for ways to make the building code requirements less expensive and less burdensome, which we're doing. And even prior to Shannon, the city was contracted with Housing Solutions of Northern Arizona to develop and initiate a down payment assistance program for those who are employed for at least 30 hours a week in Sedona. We were also already working with a private developer to build a 46 unit affordable apartment project, Sunset Lofts, in West Sedona. The city is required to receive compensation for any city land used for such projects, so we developed a strategy to use a long-term loan to the developer. We'll continue to work with developers and look at all available options to develop affordable housing to incentivize conversion from vacation rentals back to long-term rentals, and I'm very familiar with that problem having served on the Housing Commission. Uh, supporting strategies for expansion of affordable housing options during the budget process is critical, and I am committed to it. Well, mine's easy. First of all, we're going to take a few steps back. We're going to take a good look at every plan that's been created by this city since 2013 because every one of them's failed. Every one of them. When you look at the models I'm creating, they all work in unison together for a viable future. I'm not going to use a certain word tonight because this certain word's been beat up quite a bit. So I'm going to use the word viable. But when you look at our city for viable, from a viable standpoint, we need to create a viable town that will work for generations to come. When you're looking at short-term housing, I mean, quite frankly, my skill sets far exceed everyone sitting here on this panel tonight. And whoever's laughing, you don't know my skill set. So if you want to develop, I have the development background. But I do not like development, so we have to take a very good look at how we're going to develop. First thing we want to do is not pay $100,000 over appraised value for any property. You'll never get it done. Secondly, I create relationships. For example, I've been talking to some of you residents who have a lot of money, and you want to create affordable housing for our employees, but you also like your anonymity. CCNRs will also say that you must work in Sedona. You must live in Sedona. So we can create the affordable housing, yet we have to be very smart, we have to be logical, and we have to use our common sense, because we're not gonna turn Sedona into 
a playground. We need to make sure that whatever we're building conforms to the level that ICC is going to have, not here. So one of the advantages of going later in the rotation is that most of the background is covered and you don't need to do that again. So let me go back and say, I said thank you to some people, but I didn't thank you for coming tonight. So thank you for being here on a, a day in, in July and listening to council candidates. It's, it's really appreciated. And it's very important. It's a very important election. For affordable housing, yes. You know, Sedona has always had expensive housing, for sure. Uh, in the region, we've always been uh, expensive. And uh, some of it is because we have mostly single-family homes in Sedona. Looking at other cities our size across the state, there's far more selection and diversity of housing types that we have. And clearly, we've all recognized that the increase in short-term rentals is directly linked to the loss of long-term rentals, and our workforce has been pushed out of town, right? So when I'm on the campaign trail talking to people, and I often get the question, what keeps you awake at night? What's your single most important thing? And for me, it's our declining population. Declining population hurts the residents that exist. We will lose the resident focus, focus services first in this town before we lose the, the visitor focus services. We've all experienced the loss of doctors. We know the situation with the schools and teachers. We go to our restaurants, and we know they're having trouble with people. And so. That is uh, job number one for us, is to figure out ways to increase the population again. And the only way to do that is to increase the supply of our housing. And that means doing things like increasing the density of housing in Sedona, especially along 89A. We need to work with our property owners and talk about uh, mixed-use developments, commercial and retail on the ground floor, some housing above. We need to build tiny homes. We need to build small homes. We need to build apartments. We need to build right all the things. We just need to change that. I supported budgeting money to purchase land for future workforce housing projects. We are moving forward with the Jordan Lofts project, which is a public-private partnership with proposed rents to be about $990 for one bedroom apartment, which is right now, from what I'm hearing, about $1,000 less than the going rate, the market rate, with a second project to follow soon next to City Hall. I voted to establish a down payment assistance loan program to help people that work in the city. I voted to establish the joint housing manager with Cockwood so we could take a regional approach to a housing crisis. That manager has already brought in $2.5 billion to 70 new units of quality affordable housing in the, in the Verde Valley. Thank you. About a year ago, the Jordan Lofts apartment project was proposed to provide a combination of market rate and workforce housing. The project failed to move forward because there wasn't alignment between residents in the area, the developer, and city code. If we can't align those stakeholders going forward, we won't be able to make progress in building affordable housing. We need to learn from what happened on that project and develop a playbook in which there are concepts for housing development that align with residents from an aesthetic and density perspective, that align with our existing or likely updated land development code, and align with developers' ability to return uh, an acceptable profit on the project. The benefits of this playbook would be uh, expedited approval, uh, reduced development costs for projects, and a likely higher likelihood of interest from developers to take on projects here in Sedona. I believe we should also be looking at bringing back accessory dwelling units, ADUs. Those are apartment casitas that would be on someone's home, and in order for that to be successful, of course, we've got to create rules to ensure that those are going to be used for long-term housing. Last, uh, we should be looking at the Cultural Park and the Dells as significant opportunities where we can uh, put together uh, affordable and workforce housing development. And I would prioritize the Cultural Park first because it's in town, it's a much more logistically uh, easier property to work with, uh, and it also has you know, just transit benefits for anybody that would be living and working in Sedona. Thank you. The second question is, do you support home rule? If no, why not? If yes, 
How can you assure that the dollars spent by the city will benefit the younger generations in Sedona? Absolutely, positively, yes, I support home rule. The sales tax money would continue to come in, but we wouldn't be able to spend much of it. We could be forced to cut all non-essential services and reduce every department to a skeleton crew. Council would, could cut police, workforce housing, road improvement, all crossing guards, and the SIP projects. Let's not forget our short-term rental hotline and enforcement and all the small grants to nonprofits. What would you be willing to give up without home rule? There's a group of folks in town that are anti-government. They're telling people that if home rule were to fail, we could just do an override. And each year allowing people to vote on any item that they, that they would like. That's just not true. Uh, a recent family from them said, did you know Sedona Recyclers is safe without home rule? The fact is that the city funds 50% of the recycling budget. How long do you think they'll survive without 50% of their income? The library does have a small property tax, and even with funding, uh, they still are, are opening at 10 a.m. every day here. Do we really want to, a, a, a library that's going to open even later than that and close even earlier? That's not much of a service. Everybody needs the funding from the city. We need to all support home rule. Thank you. I support home rule, and you're going to hear a lot of the candidates also support that and share a lot of good, pragmatic reasons why. I'm not going to try to cover them all here, but this is elected government or representative government, and you should vote for the people you trust and then let them do their job, not tie their hands by making them bring in budget to the voters every year. That doesn't happen at the state or federal level. There's really no reason for that to happen here. Um, one of the parts of the question is, is how would you ensure that the younger generations benefit from the fact that we do have such strong resources here in the community? And what I would tell you is, is that the Sedona Community Plan is the starting point. We need to make sure that the younger generations are represented in the community plan so that they are a priority, so that that informs the city council of what they are supposed to be telling city staff to work on in budget. So that's really important. Lastly, I want to say this. Don't accept a non-answer from any candidate on this question. If you're not for home rule, then you are definitely against home rule. And if you are against home rule, then you are against working on projects to address workforce and affordable housing, transit, and any other programs designed to attract and retain a diverse culture of individuals and families in Sedona, as well as endangering our economy, which is nearly 80% made up of tourist-related businesses, many of which all of you work in or own. Thank you. So I am one of those people that are against home rule, and here's the reason why. So when the city council is a representative, I agree, but if we don't have participatory voting, which I believe that 9,000 of us should be able to vote on issues, not just seven on city council, because things can go awry as how they are going now. We are over $110 million in the budget, and what they're doing is they're just taking out more and more and more loans, and what this, what this is is, when we look at the economy right now, it's not a growth economy. It's, it's we're heading towards more of a pause with, with our economy, or even worse. And so all that, we're not going to be able to pay that back. You guys are going to have to pay that back. We're all going to have to do that. So in the instance of, when we look at all these projects, it also enables the city council to, to overspend, to not be so conscious. Take, for instance, they have buses that cost 400000 Hello? We could buy four buses for the price of one. And that would be something, number one, we're conscious of, uh, you know, just spending. But number two, the more that you guys have a voice, the more that we can contribute and have better ideas. So when it comes to home rule, no, I, I, I believe that we should bring it to the people and not be overspending. Thank you. Okay. Um, so as mayor, and you don't get to define what a yes or no means. You can make up your own decision for yourself. So regardless how anyone answers it, it doesn't mean one thing or another. It just depends on what you think it is. So as your mayor, I'm going to be responsible for dealing with the results of a yes or a no on home rule. And I'll be doing my best to manage it either way. And I can certainly understand why people would be balking at the consideration of home rule because we are told over and over again that this is being done for our benefit. When so many of us are watching our city being ripped up and changed into directions, we had no idea were going to happen and certainly didn't agree to. So that is something to consider. Um, with a majority on the council, the home rule could be incredible if the majority actually represents your interests. 
with a majority on a council who's willy-nilly spending their hearts and desires on pet projects that are out of sync and incongruent with our children's future. Eight pickleball courts, really? That, you know where they got that from? They got that from one of our fields. Um, so on council, with, with whatever you decide, my intention, because I'm the mother of a nine-year-old and it's in my interest, in his future's interest, to serve him, I want to create a robust parks and rec. Um, I will do that with or without home rule. We, will, we can get creative, but it's up to you to do your due diligence and see who's really, really in fear over not having home rule and why. So I'm a yes on the whole. Um, but I'm gonna try and answer the question around how do we figure out what the younger generation is. And by the way, I thought this was a really ageist question. Um, we talk about transparency and communication is keys, but for me, communication starts with us listening, not talking. That's why I want to start holding frequent, regular town halls in each of the communities in Sedona so that small groups of people can meet with counselors, staff, and other residents where we have time to discuss problems and solutions candidly and deeply so we can really understand what it is the younger generations need. It has always been my belief, which dictates my actions, that we need to listen to and understand the needs and suggestions of everyone living in Sedona first. Only then can we work and spend our money to ensure that both the immediate and the midterm requirements to keep our community healthy and safe are being met for all generations. This allows us to look to the future because we have created a resilient and sustainable base. Knowing that your representatives are truly listening and understanding your perspectives and the why of that perspective, and then factoring everyone's perspectives when making decisions is, in my opinion, what democracy is about. This is what it means to be listening to and hearing the real voices of the younger and the older generations of Sedonians. Yes, I support home rule without reservation, just as I support virtually all forms of local control for cities. More than enough has been said and written about this, but if you are still unsure, I recommend you read the materials on the city's website, which by law must be impartial. Just go to sedonaaz.gov and search for home rule. But I do want to say this. Many of those who oppose home rule seem to believe it's a way, and maybe the only way, to stop your city government from doing something that they particularly object to. To those people, I would like to say that there is an appropriate tool for every task. So if you have an itch on your big toe, go ahead and scratch, or maybe try some anti-itch cream. But if that doesn't work, and your only other options are a meat cleaver and a shotgun, I suggest it might be better to just let it itch. Yes, I strongly support home rules. It allows us to vote for local control over our own budget, and, and it was recommended by a committee of residents that we use that system. With the, with the out of a large portion of that revenue would have to sit in a bank account while community needs go unmet. The budget process remains the same with or without home rule. Please don't fall for the misinformation campaign against it that's being spread around. The truth can be found in an article by Sedona resident Longtime resident Sherry Richards on Sedona.biz. Please read it. The lengthy city budget process is very open to input from all voters in a variety of ways. It is a flexible document within annual limits to accommodate all ages and types of residents and businesses in Sedona <coughs> that are in Sedona to provide for what is best for the community as a whole in making policy decisions. We serve everyone from kids to retirees. Two-thirds of Arizona cities have adopted home rule and about one-quarter have adopted permanent base adjustment. Again, please look for the truth. Do not be fooled by all of the misinformation. And I urge you to vote yes on home rule. Look for the truth. First of all, I wouldn't trust anybody sitting up here and don't even trust me. I've proven myself for 26 years and I would never think that you would even trust me for a second. So in every model that I'm creating, checks and balances people, checks and balances. 
I've been investigating a number of organizations in this town. One of them went under federal investigation with Homeland Security, and they've had it for five years. I love investigating. I've investigated this city. There's one piece of the puzzle that I haven't been able to put into that puzzle, and I think it's this doggone home rule. Why are your voices being shut down? Why are those of us in the Historical Preservation Commission totally being shut down? That park over there on Brewer Road, they told us we don't have a voice. We don't have a say. This home rule could be shutting your voice down. To hell with the money. Let's put it in the bank account. Because we need to take steps back, take a good look at our town, reestablish these models, make sure they're all working in unison together for the benefit of our chosen way of life while guiding tourism. Everyone's going to want to be a part of this. Everyone. Because they envy our lifestyle. So I'm not worried about guiding tourism. They're just going to fall right into place. What I am worried about is our voice getting heard. I'm voting no on home rule. We want to change. Let's redirect a bit. It's not going to hurt anything. and It's not going to take any way, anything away from our services. And by God, they sit here and talk about our services. We haven't had any. Thank you. Yes, on home rule. It's out, I, I'm campaigning on that. I'm very strong on this issue. I was on that committee, as the mayor mentioned, four years ago that studied this. And the answer to the question of how does it benefit the younger generations is look at the budget. Where do we spend our money? We spend our money on policing. We spend our money on sewage treatment. We spend our money on fixing potholes. We're spending a lot more money now and trying to look at diverse house, diversifying the housing choices. We're spending money on traffic fixes. We're spending money on transportation systems. All of these things benefit the younger generation. We should continue to do it. So now, let me take a little risk here. I'm going to go wonky on you, policy wonk, and try to address a couple of these issues on home rule. Uh, the current uh, argument set against it is, uh, let's do a vote by the people. This vote by the people, the special one-time override, this is a special election. It's proven in Arizona and every other state and city in this nation that special elections are controlled by the special interests and the moneyed interests. So be very careful going down that path, all right? Second thing is now the, the conversation is pivoting to the PBA. The group four years ago studied the permanent base adjustment. It, there's merit in the idea of a PBA, but not in a time when Sedona's economy continues to change as fast as it is. Because once you set a PBA in a few years, we're back in this situation that if home rule, you know, it, it doesn't quite meet the needs of, of, of the economy because it's limited to state growth and population and inflation. So someday, perhaps, PBA is the right thing. But right now, home rule. Sedona XYZ would like to see increased diversity in Sedona. Racial, ethnic, sexual orientation, people with disabilities, and in all ways. What are some definitive steps you think we can take as a community to move in that direction, and what will you do, if elected, to ensure that our existing diverse communities are protected? So Sedona absolutely needs to be the place where we are all free to be our best selves. Sedona needs to be a place that welcomes everyone, regardless of race, religion, ability, gender, political beliefs, sexual preference, or economic circumstance. Whether you're visiting and you want to come here to live in harmony, not only with the Red Rocks, but with each other. Obviously, as a local government, we will continue to ensure that illegal discrimination does not occur within our community. Where it is reported or observed, we must take immediate action and effective action against the perpetrators. As a community, we can work with organizations such as the Small Business Association, Minority Business Development Organization, and the National Minority Supplier Development Council to help diverse businesses get started within our community. The city can develop working relationships with micro-lenders, like the SBA Microloans Division, the ASEAN Corporation or Opportunity, which is uh, AO Fund, Kiva, Grameen, sorry guys, only women can have these microloans, or provide a diversity business fund program under the Small Grants and Loans Program. I would personally like to do more to celebrate our differences, whether they be cultural, physical, or preferential. This might be anything from pride celebration to diversity business fairs to cultural fairs to whatever else we as a community believe we should celebrate about ourselves. 
We have a lot of diverse groups already living here and we should be listening to and understanding how we can ensure inclusion within our community on an everyday basis. I support this goal entirely, but I think it is one of those issues that has to be addressed at a fairly high level as part of our long-term vision. Last year, when staff proposed to council a process for updating our community plan, that proposal suggested that the vision in the current plan was likely unchanged, so a more limited update that than last time was called for. I pushed instead for a, uh, I pushed instead to let our new community plan work group discuss research and reset our vision for the next 10 years. Why? Because things change too fast. We need to be sure we agree on the Sedona we want to become. Consider these two extreme possibilities. Would we be okay if about one third of Sedona homes were occupied by old, mostly white retirees on isolated half acre or larger lots, and the other two thirds of homes were short term rentals? Alternatively, what if most of our retirees have left Sedona 10 years from now, and most of our residents are multi-ethnic mix of professionals who work from home or work in our tourism and service industries, many of whom are climate refugees, all living in highly connected, denser neighborhoods? Neither of these extremes is likely to happen in 10 years, but we could be well on our way to one of them or a very different one without clear shared vision. It is up to the current residents to determine through community plan process, what's Sedona we want in the future? I strongly believe that diversity is strength and I share the views of XYZ. One of the first actions the city took soon after I was elected in 2014 was to work on a human rights ordinance, which was adopted in September of 2015 and which is still in place today to encourage the, and protect diversity in our community. We were among the earliest cities to adopt such an ordinance, and I'm proud to have seen it through to being a reality. And we're one of only 10 cities in Arizona to have such an ordinance. And the second, most of them are large cities. There are only two small cities. There's one smaller than us, Winslow, just barely smaller than us. I'm guessing that today, many current residents are unaware of its existence in our code. How many of you knew we had a human rights ordinance? Uh, a couple of hands, hardly anyone. I believe that our lack of affordable housing is another barrier to promoting diversity in our community, so anything we do in that regard will also help to achieve increased diversity of all kinds. I believe that humans are naturally inclusive. We need each other to survive. Thank you. Well, short-term rentals are certainly putting a hammer on that, isn't it? Economic diversity. How are we going to do that in this town? Take a look at the models. Um, one of the things I want, to rep I want to share with all of you is everything that we do, we're going to do together. You're not, you're not heard right now. You're not listened to. So participatory programs have been designed for all of you to now engage, be part of the future by creating the solutions, and that's how I've created everything. So when it comes to economic diversity, for example, the Dells, we've got 265 acres across from the sewage treatment plant. Why in the hell would we want to develop that? When you take a good look at our economy now, is anyone talking about a possible recession right around the corner? No, instead they want to take our budget up to $112 million. We've got some serious things coming around the corner and no one is paying attention to this. Not one person, I haven't heard a thing. What we need to do, as I had mentioned, take a few steps back, start creating the models for our future. One of those is Sedona Farms, Sedona Gardens out here, all set up for workforce housing, but it's an incentivized program to not only grow over 12 million pounds of food that would support not only Sedona, but the village of Oak Creek, but it's also incentivized, it's an incentivized program to get every car off the road, to park them, and to get onto our transportation model. So when you want to talk about economic diversity, then think about coming together, start dreaming, start fantasizing, start creating, because this is what we're going to be doing together. So I fervently believe, absolutely, that strong communities are built on diversity. 
diversity of ages, diversity of backgrounds, diversity of incomes, right? diversity of interests. These are the things that make for a strong community. And the single most impactful thing we can do in Sedona to impact the growth of diversity in our town is uh, diversify the housing choices that we have. So you didn't know that this was going to turn into a forum on housing, did you, right? But apparently I'm making it so. Um, and, but I, I truly believe that this is the root of how we rebuild our population and how we uh, address diversity issues in this town by making parts of it people can afford to live here and to work here, and to play here, and to retire here, and to do all the things. So, some specific things that we can do. One of my biggest fears when I'm walking around town is looking at the areas that we have of, of manufacturing homes, the manu manufactured home areas. And I'm worried that those, that's the next place that's gonna be redeveloped, and we're gonna lose those, and, and fancy homes will go there. So we need to look at our zoning codes and how we can protect that, and do work with the residents and the property owners about deed restrictions to kind of keep the character of those areas intact. Thank you. I believe that we, uh, 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 as a city, we have to set the example. We have a human rights ordinance, as uh, Sandy has already mentioned. We also have a community plan and CFAs that address diversity. Our recent uh, remodel of the police station includes forward-thinking projects like a transgender bathroom, a lactation room, Ex uh, expanded female locker rooms, and to set the stage for our current and future female officers here. Many know that we will be hiring a new police chief. Uh, of the, our two top candidates, one is a female and one is the African American. At the end of the day, a, welcome com a welcoming community happens when its residents are welcoming as well. When we all embrace diversity, when they don't mimic every proposal that might, might create opportunities for others. When they treat people who may not have as much money in the bank or look or act like them with, with respect and acceptance. This wasn't a question really necessary for all of us here. It's really for all of you here in, in the audience and, and people in the city. We have to be more welcoming to each other. We have to be more work, able to work together as a united city to protect each other. We're a small town. We need to be working together. Thank you. First off, it would be presumptuous to think that I can solve this problem alone as far as underrepresented groups are concerned. But that said, here's how I would proceed. As I mentioned in my introduction, I'm serving on the 10-year community plan update working group, and our primary mission is to ensure that all the diverse voices of Sedona are heard over the two-year process of updating our city's strategic plan. So we've got to make sure we're capturing the voices of these diverse groups, but importantly, we should use this process to foster community, connection, and opportunity to serve in an ongoing manner for these groups, not just during the plan update process, but moving forward in perpetuity. And that brings me to the other uh, thought I have on this question. As recently as this past Saturday, I met a resident at the younger end of the age spectrum uh, that is well-spoken, well-educated, highly motivated, and has essentially been shut out of meaningful opportunities to contribute and lead in our community on account of his youth. And you could realistically switch out youth for any other underrepresented group. So what do we do about it? Uh, first off, we've got to acknowledge it, and then we've got to look at programming to uh, address this, to basically to mentor and give people uh, in these underrepresented groups an opportunity to deeply engage, to meet others, and to feel like they're making a difference. Because I think uh, the diverse groups that we're seeking to attract um, will be successful in attracting them by making those who are here already feel like they're part of this community. They will become the, the, the advertising to bring more diversity to Sedona. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I like that comment about diversity and youth, because um, diversity and youth is um, something also required for the city council as well. But let's return to the question itself, which is diversity for sexual orientation, disabilities, and racial. Well, that is identity politics, which it isn't for the government to make. Um, no one here is telling anyone not to come here. Mama Sedona calls you, and if you're called here, you come here, and everyone is embraced. What I find to be the crux of the problem when it comes to diversity is the economic diversity. Uh, we have limited land, and so what would it look like? We brought up affordable housing. That's been like a running theme here, and I completely agree with 
that. So for instance, Cobb Homes or Adobe Homes. This is something that's totally sustainable, which matches our sustainability plan. So, but it hasn't been presented because it's out of the box thinking. It could cost somewhere between 10,000 and 50,000 to create a single home. A person could buy an entire home or take out a loan for that. So we, so we need to be thinking outside the box and this is a way that we can create economic diversity, which I, which I find to be the crux of all of our problems here in Sedona. Again, everyone is welcomed. Um, this is God's earth, we're all here. I see this as a very beautiful, warm, gathering community, and everyone has been embraced. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was a great answer. Um, I find this question a little bit uh, disingenuous and somewhat creepy. I don't think it's right to target and take people into categories. You know, you're supposed to treat people by their character, the concept of their character, their humanity. In Sedona, people are called here. It speaks to their heart. They stay here because it's an embracing community, an experience for them, a spiritual, physical one. But we can't archaically go about identifying specific people that need what, the, our help? We just need to be a beautiful community with enriching opportunities for everyone to participate in because they seek to be here, not because they're less than or don't have as many opportunities. This is America. That, that's what the whole Constitution is about. So I take offense to this idea that we're going to make it easier for some people because they can't do it on their own. I, I just find it... You know, we are diverse. That's, that's what this entire beautiful community is, is about. And the more opportunity we provide for a nurturing existence rather than isolating people into their skin color or into uh, what race they are, um, we, just, we, ha we really have to look past that. It's far beyond time for that. Many members of Sedona XYZ are raising their children in Sedona. What specific initiatives will you champion to ensure that we retain the young families that are here and attract new young families to live and work in Sedona? Well, I certainly wish I had a lot of time. This is why I encourage everyone to go on CurtisforSedona.com because everything's been written in detail. So when you look at, for example, the Dells, Every program out there is also degree educational programs for our students. Because when you look at what's happened to our world, all fisheries have been depleted from the Canadian cod to the Frades River. All agricultural has been depleted, the soils have been depleted. So you need to really seriously think about our future. And in doing so also, what are we gonna do with our school system that I'm not happy with at all? I'd rather educate these children in a better, environment, an environment where we're all involved, a community supported environment, and have the children come into every aspect of what we're doing with regards to these educational programs, and we will have ASU, NAU, and U of A involved in all of this also. Our kids are pinnacle to the future of this city, and to be able to educate them to take our town into the future, and to create a viable generational future for every generation to come, is extremely pinnacle for us. We're the generation now, I'm gonna to point to me, I'm the generation that must make change and must bring this town into a viable future for these generations or we might as well just kiss Sedona goodbye. And you know, there's one message I wanna mention. I go to Sedona's grave because I respect what they've done here. She said one thing to me, I've lost my son, don't let me lose my town. Think about that. So I uh, have a really great group of guys that I ride mountain bikes with, and uh, a few years ago, two years ago, a, a guy joined us from Southern California escaping COVID, had a young family. He's got a very high tech job. He was able to live and work here. It's fantastic. But he just made the decision to leave because of the schools. Now, 
Unfortunately, the city doesn't control the schools. I actually think that's fortunately the city doesn't control schools. We've got a complex enough job as it is, so, you know, thank God. But what we can do, and what we do do, is sit down with the schools and ask them what they need, right? And where we can help, and you know my answer about that, is housing diversity, right? We need, <laughs> we need to have places for the teachers to live and the families to live that can go to the schools and those things. But the other things that we can do is, uh, from a city perspective, we can help with preschool and post-school activities. We can, and look at the budget, and it's there. We're building parks, we're building sidewalks, right? These are the things that are important to young families. Uh, we are constantly trying to work with Northern Arizona Healthcare and trying to improve and retain the medical system here in town. Very difficult task there as well, but super important. Uh, kids, at least I know, raised my kids, urgent care and having primary care doctors in town is a really critical thing, and so we need to work with our community and with that industry and try and figure out how to move that. Workforce housing has been referenced quite a few times tonight. But it hasn't been maybe made clear that it's workforce housing with families. That's critical. So when we want to have a, a workforce housing uh, project for our employees throughout the city, for any business, any uh, professional office, it's to bring their families here as well. So that we can help vitalize not only our businesses, but our schools and our high schools, and our sports team. We don't really have much of sports teams anymore. We need to revitalize all of that. And by having workforce housing that's affordable, we can, we can do that. Go Scorpions. Thank you. <laughs> when I thought about what makes a community attractive to young families, uh, I had to think about when my family was a little bit younger, and I thought, well, safety, school quality, diversity of culture and activities, the weather and the cost of living with a heavy emphasis on housing, of course. So I think here in Sedona, we score well on safety and the weather. I think we've got some gaps on school quality and diversity of culture and activities, and healthcare, Pete, very well noted. Um, but those elements are part of a virtuous circle because as we make progress on those, then we make ourselves more attractive to attracting families. Um, but really, we're in a sad spot concerning housing. So what can we do? Uh, one thought is, uh, look at some of the other communities around the country, like Bentonville, Arkansas, the home of Walmart. They're providing $10,000 incentives to get families to move to the community. So I think we should look at something like that, a community organization staffed by volunteers, funded by the city at a million dollars annually for incentives at 10K per family to apply to move to Sedona. That would bring 100 new families per year and if they average one and a half kids per family, that's 1,500 kids over 10 years. Yes, there's going to be some attrition, but we've got to do something to, to resupply our school system here. So that's certainly something I would look at, as well as any other support for families with younger children. We, our, our families should be benefiting from all the tourist dollars we have here. We certainly have the funds to support them. Thank you. This is a great question about raising the family. Um, so when we take a look at what's currently being planned with the city, uh, they're planning on turning classic grounds into, like Samara said, pickleball courts, also sectioning off some of those areas for more event space for tourists. So these are decisions that the current city council is already saying, we're not for the, for the families, we're not for the kids, we're siphoning it off to other areas. So that's their priorities. So I would, I would definitely um, reprioritize passing ground, especially the parking that's been given to the tourists for the shuttle system. So again, we see dwindling that they're doing. Um, also, I study economics. So what would it look like if we had, we're a tourist town, we had two tier pay system. Um, so prices, there'd be one price for tourists and one price for locals. I was talking to this one local and they said, did you know renting out Posse Grounds, it used to be $270 to rent it out. Now it's up to $600. So if you want to talk about kids, you want to talk about family, how about those birthday parties that they used to have there? Or how about just residents wanting to like do a charity, which is what they were going to do to raise money for Ukraine. And they weren't able to because now it's $600. So okay, good luck um, City Council. Um, also, how about I was talking to some other residents and they said, oh, I really like um, Street Fest. Let's do that. Potluck. Let's get everyone together. The current city council, they put the kibosh on that. It's like such curmudgeon. And also, all the, all the music. There used to be tons of music here. And they just put it all down. And so here we go. All this livelihood. We have all the talent. We have everyone coming together. And all they're doing is saying, no, no, no. So why don't we bring some of the stuff that we already want and bring it back. Thank you. 
Sedona should be known not only as a wonderful place to visit, but also a wonderful place to live and raise a family. Fiber optics for high-speed internet service is essential for both educational reasons, but also for remote workers and local merchants. But safety is of utmost importance. Our children must be protected. And that means being extremely thoughtful when giving the okay on where we develop parking lots for our visitors in proximity to our children. I plan on championing parks and rec's ability to develop, a fun, uh, develop and fund a wide range of incredibly enriching opportunities for our children of all ages. I will get input from the com community on what a true community center would look like. Community festivals, cultural experiences are an integral part of building cohesiveness and celebration within our city. A healthy and active lifestyle starting with our youth, encouraging cultural experiences, community parades, neighborhood walks, and other festivals focused on our residents, but could also attract and welcome visitors. There can be a marriage between the two. And as we come together, we can curate the yearly experience in Sedona so that we can have more of a hand in the nature of the visitorship. So I'm gonna start with the attraction part. Remote work is now in the mainstream and there can be few better places on earth to work remotely than Sedona. For sure. Uh, and we should tell people, today many of our neighbors own homes in Sedona but live and work elsewhere. What would it take for our friends to move back into our city full time besides reliable high-speed internet? Um, I don't know, let's find out. Let's ask and see what we can do to attract them back into our community on a full-time basis. We've already spoken about looking for diverse business owners and helping them get started, and that applies here as well. And much of this relies on having affordable and available housing. So we're all the way back to question one. Um, so let's talk a little bit now about retention. I'm a fundamental believer in education. Yeah, you can tell I have a lot of degrees. And the importance of access to high quality education for all children. The funding of our schools is controlled by the county and state governments. According to the World Population Review in 2022, Arizona ranks 59th overall for public school education. Decidedly ungreat. My mother was a special education teacher, and I know teachers want livable salaries, access to quality equipment and tools, strong support for parents and community. We need to lobby for and support state and county initiatives to support poor education. We also need to listen and learn what more we can do for our schools and teachers. Beyond core education as a community, we can investigate the costs for providing or encouraging after-school programs, decent meals for kids, even when school is not in session, enrichment programs from athletics to arts to sciences and well to coding. Um, we also need to match volunteers with programs and for the city help. I have a lot more to say on this topic. It's dear to my heart, so look me up after this. Well, the uh, region-wide implementation of broadband and the housing issues have been brought up, so I'm going to skip over those. Um, but beyond those, I think that our neighborhood connections projects will actually do a lot to convince young families to relocate here. Retirees tend to favor lower density and fewer homes in isolated neighborhoods. But the miles of urban trails and multi-use pathways we're planning will be more attractive to younger families who are even more willing and able to walk and bike to parks and businesses. Also, the transit plans that we're implementing should appeal to a younger demographic. This may be especially true if they are relocating from cities or universities where there is less dependence on the automobile. And finally, we need to redouble our efforts to attract non-tourist industries, which is a major objective of our current community plan. Raising children in a small town is always going to be a challenge in some ways, and a blessing in others. For a small city with limited resources, I believe our Parks and Rec staff does an excellent job of providing a wide range of activities and spaces for children to play. We're fuller staffed for the first time in the history of the city. And we uh, have budgeted expenditures in FY23 of 1.2 million, which provides enough for diverse programs and activities for all ages. Amongst the most popular offerings are the splash pad at Sunset Park, the swimming pool at the Posse Grounds, the skate park and bike skills park near the hub, story walk at Sunset Park, the celebration of spring, Fourth of July Wet Fest, which just was over and was very popular, Movies in the Park, Breakfast with Santa, and Uptown Trick or Treat, but there are many more. In addition, Sedona provides a very low crime, safe environment for our children, and recently completed a share, the shared use path on Thunder Mountain Sanborn, 
which is often used as a safe place for families walking with kids, dogs, baby carriages, toddlers, and little ones just learning to ride a bike for the first time, or children walking or biking to and from school, and we are continuing to expand such opportunities. All right, this is our final question. I'd like to thank all of the candidates for adhering to the rules and helping this to run so smoothly. Uh, this is the final question. Uh, one of Sedona XYZ core, XYZ's core values is sustainability, environmentally and otherwise. If you are elected, what will you do to ensure that the elements of Sedona's climate action plan are implemented and that the city government serves as environmental stewards of this beautiful place we call home? Great question. And um, for me, climate action, uh, the climate change is real. You know, I, I, I'm out there with that as well. Um, the climate action plan that the city has and the sustainable tourism plan, if you've read those documents, they're good documents. Are they perfect? No. Do they need updating? Yes. Do they probably need some improvement in metrics and whatnot? Yes. Um, but the city has a very legitimate role in in advocating and modeling and, uh, and uh, incentivizing our community to move in the right direction relative to sustainability. Uh, what I would like to see in our next step is more detailed implementation plans. And I'd like to see a select elements of the climate action plan. And I suggest that we start with water. The drought is real, whether you believe in climate change or not, the drought is real. Water, uh, we don't control our water supply in this town. But we still can work on understanding the supply, our, our use of water, our conservation of water, our reuse of water from the city water treatment plant. We produce a great product that we just pump back into the ground. Perhaps there's beneficial reuse to having it here. I'd like to see detailed implementation plans with real metrics, with real goals, with real steps. We can also look at fire. Fire is another one of these risks, right? Fire risk mitigation fire risk reduction measures, evacuation plans, which by the way, the city is doing all these things already, but they're difficult, they take time, they take money, they take focus, and we just have to keep on the job. Well, thank you, Pete, you just took away half of my, <laughs> my presentation. But I agree with everything that, that Pete Furman just said, but I, and I believe strongly about sustainability. I mean, this is the third time that this question has come up during one of our forums. So obviously our community is just as engaged and just as concerned about it, okay? So, and, and people do believe in our science, and I agree with that. As a member of council, I came, I came to better understand the issues and gain a greater respect for sustainability and the climate and consequences of climate change, especially the loss of water. As a council, I knew that we needed the best people on staff to educate the council and the community. So I support the best option I could, and hire staff to educate us and help educate the community. So we have a sustainability manager, and we have a new staff of two people to work with her. And they're educating me, and hopefully the, the rest of the council so we can learn more, to do more, to be more sustainable. And I'm going to continue in that direction. Thank you. So climate change is real, and we should take practical steps to preserve our red rocks as well as the planet. And the Climate Action Plan, or CAP, was born out of the city listening to residents in the community plan process in which we said that protecting the environment was of the utmost importance. So I support the CAP, however, I do believe it's overly broad and should focus more on driving the biggest bang for the buck, which means focusing on building structures and transportation since they represent 97% of the plan impact. Concerning building structures, the city can provide retrofit incentives to encourage homeowners to make their property solar and EV ready. I think the carrot is better than the stick, so provide incentives, provide uh, offsets to permitting fees for residents that are choosing to make their properties more energy efficient. In transportation, we need to hurry up and get our transit plan implemented to its fullest extent and drive for the whole notion, no pun intended, the whole notion of park once and then ride transit. Um, super important, it takes tourist cars off the road, relieving congestion for residents, and it reduces vehicle emissions. So it's a real win-win. Uh, we do need uh, 
um, work on uh, metrics, as Pete mentioned, and the city's going to shortly be uh, unveiling uh, a new baseline measure on uh, uh, emissions, as well as where we stand after 2020 and 2021. Uh, overall, though, I think we need to get community engagement on this topic. We need passionate volunteers that want to talk to their neighbors and actually help them figure out ways to reduce energy usage at their home and actually use it, um, these measures as a gamified program to create community competition and pride. Thank you. Thank you. So let's take a look at first the sustainability plan. First off, it's a whole lot of copy and paste. This is a federal plan that's been brought down. It doesn't meet the needs of Sedona. So let's just be realistic here. Secondly, there's no statistics in there that say anything about emissions or anything that we're going to be following. And it doesn't rely solely on a transportation system. Let's take facts here. More than 50% of the greenhouse is due to industrial agricultural practices. Okay, that's what's emitting that into the air. So if we really want to be sustainable, it's bringing food sustainability here, a greenhouse here. We're food sovereign. We want um, to reduce our carbon footprint. We want healthy food, uh, local food, and that even helps businesses because now everyone is purchasing less at cost, even the residents are purchasing less at cost. So let's also look at it from an economic standpoint as well. But let's also look at water collection. In the, in the sustainability plan, they only say, let's do water collection for the new development. Well, we're not gonna be having a lot of new development because we've been talking about this the entire night. So what would it look like if we actually had water collection tanks on top and we, uh, we gave rebate, rebates to homeowners or we had fog net catchers? You know, I look at research from around the world and what are the deserts doing to collect, to collect water? And it's fog net ca catchers, like in Saudi Arabia. Okay, so I'm looking at that. And yeah, when, so basically, all this of sustainability is us asking ourselves, who are we? What, what are our needs and how can we make it our own? So thank you. Um, so I, I encourage all of you to look at this climate action plan. This thing would not fly even in our high school exhibition. It looks like a, high, a, a freshman year NAU student put together a bunch of graphs. It has very little, little metric or data to support any of the various things that's gonna, that are going to require you to change your life. I don't believe, I'm not in, involved in a belief system of climatology. So I believe, yes, of course, climate changes, but I won't subscribe wholeheartedly to some agenda that's being pushed forth from somewhere outside here. How many people are gonna die of climate change in the next 10 years in here in Sedona? Do, do we know a metric? Does it exist? Is there really some sort of climate crisis that we're bending over uh, 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 back a knee to, to restructure and weight our way of life when we have actual environmental issues here that aren't being addressed? We have water issues, we have land issues. Why, why isn't there a whole plan dedicated just to that? Why are we focused on something outside of this nebulous, metricless uh, agenda driven by uh, entities that uh, lead us to completely change our way of life. And in many cases, um, there's a thing called the, gym, the Green Jim Crow. Have you heard of it? Look it up. Why is it that everything quote unquote sustainable costs money and somebody makes a profit at the end of it at the expense of your way of life? As I've said in every panel, um, I do believe in climate change. And adapting to changes in climate and safeguarding the natural world in which humans live is very important to me and critical to the present and the future of Sedona. Alicia Pack, who is a sustainability engineer or director, I guess, director of sustainability, is working on getting baselines for the city projects, which is what CAP is about, the city projects, so we can tell which programs are helping and which are not. Beyond the city goals for reduction of pollution, reduction of pollution and efficiencies in climate management, which I will support and help move forward as expeditiously as possible, we need to look at the other sustainability goals. Critically, we need projects to help the more vulnerable in our community, many of whom are young families and their children. Not only with the advice um, for adapting our, their homes to be more resilient to heat and cold, but with projects for the creation of cooling centers using existing facilities in our community, like the pool, the hub, the community center, as well as the creation of more cooling green spaces through our park systems. I think supporting our most vulnerable is one area in which we can do much more. Acting as stewards requires us to truly start working together as a community, residents and businesses, towards a zero waste hospitality sector, increasing usage of renewable energy, reducing the usage of one-time plastics, converting vehicles rented in our community to alternative energy sources like electricity. We must continue working with the USFS on how we can help conserve and preserve the national forests in which we live and that we love. 
We should have a discussion as to whether the city can purchase available land around the Oak Creek to create conserved green spaces. There are undoubtedly other elements we can add to the list as we brainstorm this together. Well, it actually makes me depressed to hear that we have to go down the line and say, I believe in climate change is real. I believe in climate change is real. We're all here, we're all saying that we want to uh, support the entire community and yet, we're not willing to believe 97% of the scientists in this country. Uh, and that was years ago. I mean, it's, it's got to be close to 100% by now. So I'm going to leave that one alone. Um, I, I want to say that uh, this question, if you may, you may remember hearing it, it said, um, the core values is sustainability environmentally or otherwise. And I was very glad to hear that, environmentally or otherwise. Because my top three issues, which you can get on my little cards if you pick one up on the way out, my top three issues are sustainable community, sustainable economy, and sustainable future. I explain what those mean on my website, which would take longer than 90 seconds to read. But the summary is, first, that we can only work on specific issues like housing and traffic if we understand how they, inter how they are interconnected with each other and other issues. And second, our activities can't forever be one directional extract, transform, consume, and discard. Instead, our community, economy, and future need to be infinitely renewing and regenerating. Someone needs to bring this system level view to our decision making, and that's how I see my role. As for the Climate Action Plan specifically, it is a very good start, especially because it does two things. We have another 30 seconds. Oh. Okay. It's, it's one more sentence. One more sentence. Um, especially because it declared our intention to set a target, our intention and to set a target. But it too will need frequent renewal and regeneration to respond to technological advances, shifting priorities, and increasing urgency. I'm eager to help it in any way I can, as well as to support the programs that will help us realize the plan's objectives. I am happy that the city has adopted a climate action plan with the goal of cutting greenhouse gas emissions by 50% by 2030. And we have increased our staff from a single employee to three full-time employees to ensure that it will be implemented. The plan is an integral part of our city government and we continue to educate ourselves and our staff to incorporate sustainable practices in our daily operations and our daily lives. We will soon be announcing educational opportunities for residents as well to understand how we measure and track our progress and how to take advantage of the many sustainable strategies to protect our fragile planet. Programs already underway include the Home Energy Retrofit Program, the Northern Arizona Solar Co-op, and the Community Food Scraps Compost Pilot Program. Our Community Plan Update and the Sustainable Tourism Plan can also help us reach our goals and a citywide transit system to be rolled out over the next five years with an expectation of all electric buses will also contribute. We are adding charging stations for electric vehicles in stages with the most recent addition at Posse Grounds, which was approved at last Tuesday's council meeting. Again, budgetary support from the mayor and councilors will be needed to keep the implementation of the plan moving forward at a steady pace and I am committed to that. Look, I'm going to read something. Well, you know, over a number of years, I've created some wonderful relationships. One of them is Frank Tunnell, who built Anthem. I don't know if you're all familiar with Anthem. He's a reclaimed water specialist. Anthem is 33, 33 miles north of Phoenix. The entire town is built around reclaimed water. So when you go in there, the fountains, the lakes, everything. So I had him up here, showed him the model out there on the Dells, and he's all for it. He's going to be here to build it as long as I'm in the mayor's position. And he is a not only reclaimed water specialist, we're looking at gray water, rainwater, every type of retaining water possible throughout the entire town. And that includes getting all residents involved too. Viable sustainability, that's the dirty word, sustainability, that's been beaten up over time. But viable sustainability characterizes meeting our own needs without compromising the ability of future generations to satisfy their own viable demands. 
Last election, I start, we lost the, the last election by 168 votes, people, and it was all about us, and that was during COVID. So I got to work, didn't stop. I've been hard at work creating applicable community-supported models designed to perform in unison through a broad range of economic activities with a viably sustainable structure protecting Sedona's advancement for generations to come. It relies on revenue for tourism and local employment resources resulting in improved cross-industry cooperation and mutual benefit, productivity rates, and the health of the local labor market. Most importantly, economically, this is just not enough time, people. <laughs> economically diverse models designed to evolve and sustain through technology, tech, through technological advancements, which are projected to increase regional resiliency and stability through time while protecting and securing our current chosen way of life and that of generations forthcoming. And I have more, thank you. Well, that's our last question. And so um, I did not actually plan this, so we're gonna have to just, uh, I guess we can start with you. You've got the microphone. So you have uh, 60 seconds to give your final remarks on why you want to be the mayor. You have the timer? Okay. I chose to run for the mayor because I feel I'm the only one who can really lead us into the future. I'm the only one out there doing the work to create models for our future. I hear a bunch of talk, 26 years of talk, and I've had enough. It's time for the people to now come together within participatory programs and for the people now to make the decisions for the future of Sedona. I have no problem leading us, that's easy for me. And I can also delegate everything to be done in this city appropriately through your words. Everything you see online on my website was created through your conversations with me or from what I've read uh, with regards to all of you answering various questions and concerns. So everything you see, you'll see is community supported programs that you must be involved with for us to be able to move into the future. Vote Kurt Gelbach, take a look at the website, and let's live life instead of complaining constantly every day about life. Thank you. From the time I moved here in 1972, I've taken an active role in various organizations in Sedona and across the Verde Valley. And the relationships I've developed and the breadth of experience I've had has positioned me well to be an effective mayor, especially my recent work with two Verde Valley collaboratives, Sustaining Flows, which protects the perennial flows in the Verde River, and the Verde Front, which promotes sustainable recreation use of the Verde River. I've also been a leader in advocating for local control of vacation rentals, both in the Verde Valley and in the state. My role with the League of Arizona Cities and Towns also provides me with a good platform since I'm a member of their executive committee, I chair one of their five policy committees, and I serve on another. I've always taken the lead on this issue in the Verde Valley and as a member of the Greater Arizona Mayor's Association, so I have well-developed working relationships with both regionally and at the state level. In summary, I believe my proven leadership and experience as mayor for eight years counts, and I'm asking for your vote. Please visit MayorSandy.com for more, and vote yes on him. Well, first of all, I'm very happy that Sedona XYZ has sponsored this forum. Um, you understand well both the resident needs and business needs because you're involved in both of them. And you're in the best position to help us find the balance of those two often conflicting um, uh, drivers. So we need your voices on uh, things like this, and we really appreciate you doing it. Um, I'm going to say a final word uh, about the fact that I'm the old white guy on this uh, on this panel. Um, I've never been a woman, and I've never been of Hispanic origin, um, but I have, at one time, been most of the ages represented in this room. So I still know how to think and act young. And I can and will continue to advocate not just for the horizon of my baby boomer lifetime, but for the horizons of X, Y, and Z generations and all generations to follow. I hope you will go to SedonaJT.com. That and my little card out there is the entire expense of my campaign. So uh, I hope to see you on my website. Thank you. So 
So I'd also like to thank XYZ, my fellow panelists, and everyone in the audience for investing the time and energy it takes for these important discussions. All the questions tonight reflect various requirements for creating a resilient and sustainable Sedona. I understand the roles of the state, the counties, the USFS, the city, and I believe in our ability to improve our current quality of life at the same time that we safeguard Sedona for future generations. I believe local government needs to represent its residents by listening, understanding the why of the problem, and planning to measure the results of the proposed action. I believe in being honest and transparent. I believe in community engagement and acting on feedback. My role as a counselor is to represent all of us. I have more at melissawdone.com. I'm not only listening, I'd like to start a conversation. And oh, by the way, my hair's been turning silver since I was 22. Thank you all so much for coming and considering us for your representation in local office. It is time for change. It is our time, and we're at a pivotal point. We cannot allow another year to go by with the same people who have been in office for years and years and continue on in this trajectory. It is up to us, so let's do it. It's so wonderful to see people who are open to different ideas, thoughts, debate, and diversity. It is our turn. So let's thank those who came before us, and we will kindly take the torch from here. And I hope to see some of you the next time so that we can continue and you can be up here leading our city into a vision for our community together. Thank you for coming out this evening and it is an honor to run for city council. Um, Basically, I put residents first, um, also businesses first. I believe in less government and more opportunities for the locals. So this large transportation system, for instance, you know, they're gonna hire more staff, um, more mechanics. Well, you know, that's taking away from mechanic shops that are here. And that seems to be a running theme here is that they're pulling business away from here. I'm very much into conservative spending. I'm also into regenerative economics. So instead of just spending money, how can we turn that around and make money and make it regenerative? I believe participatory voting. What would it look like if 9,000 of us voted instead of just seven on city council? And also, it's all about innovation, diversity, and diversity of age, and diversity of ideas. I believe in technology and making things efficient, cost-effective, and very easy and seamless for everyone to get involved, to formulate ideas, and to really execute all these programs that we want to be doing, and um, all these inspired ideas. Thank you, and Jennifer Christodana back. You have a distinct choice between candidates tonight. There's those that lack qualifying experience and involvement in serving our community, but who turn around and attack those who do. You've got candidates that uh, look at uh, climate change and say it's a function of global conspiracy or call it the hokey pokey. I'm all in for Sedona, folks. Uh, I've been doing the work to learn how this city operates, to serve on one of its most important working groups. I've been generating and actually working on real ideas right now to affect positive change for our community. I have the experience to lead and work with diverse groups while fostering a collaborative and positive culture. You can't criticize and complain your way to making Sedona better. I'm Brian Fultz, I'd be grateful for your vote, and you can count on me to be a positive agent for change for Sedona. Please go to brianforsedona.com, and thanks for coming tonight. Marcy Omar, thank you, and to the board of XYZ, thank you for taking the time to put this all together. I know it wasn't an easy thing to do. Thank you all for coming tonight. As I speak with residents, I have knocked on literally hundreds and hundreds of doors the past several months. I don't know if I've knocked on any of your doors, but I have made a point of knocking on doors and hearing clear messages that people do not feel their voices are being heard. I am committed to changing in how the mayor and city council and, a, and the staff communicate with, this, with our public. I have done a model, I have actually done it for eight years, by calling people back who email me, by communicating. I believe in town halls we can meet, discuss in small groups, and debate on topics of concern without the three minute limitation, okay, that we have in council meetings. That's one idea. For eight years I've always been open to speaking with our residents and to engage in, in how to impact uh, on decisions to, that are important to me as your mayor. And these things impact you and the community and your families. As your mayor, I want to take the model to a whole new level. I'm Scott Giablo. Please visit my website, electscottmayor.com. Thank you.
And yes, thank you to every everybody that's here. Uh, these forums are very important, so thank you for your time. Uh, I moved to Sedona four and a half years ago to literally ride my bike into the sunset. At least that's what I thought. But because of my background, I took the Citizens Academy and then the Police Citizens Academy. If you haven't taken those pro programs offered by the city, take them. They're awesome. You get to meet the city leaders. You understand what who they are, their character, their knowledge and experience, and what they're doing and what they're not doing. But they are the gateway drug into more involvement in our community. And for me, it was all the things that I've gotten involved in in the last four and a half years. But like you, and I'm, as I go around and talk to people, there are things out of whack in, in our community right now. And I think that I have the experience and the knowledge and the energy to help us back them back. But these quality of life issues that we're facing today, they're not simple. They are super complex. If they were easy, they'd be solved already. And this city council, our current city council, is working their tails off on these issues. And it takes time and energy and money and focus to keep the progress moving, and that's what I offer. Thank you. Thank you to all the candidates for being here tonight. We know um, it was a really compressed format. I'm so thankful for you for honoring the time limits, and I know it's very difficult to discuss complex issues in such a short period of time, but we appreciate you accommodating our request. Um, thank you for the audience for your attention. We really appreciate it. Uh, we know you probably have questions as well. We've invited the candidates to stay afterwards and speak with you about any questions you may have, and I encourage you to do so. Remember, election day for the primary election is August 2nd. Early voting ballots have already been mailed out, and completed ballots can be returned by mail or dropped off at an election location in your town. Um, if you registered as a non-designated independent, you can vote. When you go to your polling place, you'll be asked to designate which party ballot you want. If you're a permanent early voter, you should have received a form from the county elections office which allowed you to set, select the party ballot you, <laughs> on which you, you wish to vote. Um, you may see that there's been someone videotaping here tonight. Your website is Sedona.biz? Yes, yeah, Sedona period biz. Sedona period biz, it'll be available there. We've also done a video as well. Our website is SedonaXYZ.com. We're gonna post it as soon as we can. And if you'd like to share it with others that you think might be interested in the program, please do. Thanks again to the library. And if you'd like to have us on or anything, feel free to leave.